How many know he's a good, good father? Yes. He's perfect in all of his ways. Amen. I'm grateful that I'm loved by him. Let us bow our heads. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer and right into the word of God. Dear gracious heavenly father, God, we do thank you and praise you for another opportunity to stand before your people. God, we ask that you would hide me beneath the cross. God, that you would think through my mind, speak through my mouth. God, let it be all of you and less of me. Let the people be eternally touched and blessed. Let no one's coming be in vain. And for that, we give you praise and we thank you in Jesus name. And let the people say, Amen. Deliverance Temple, can you show them what we do with your Bibles in your hands? Go ahead and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I will have what it says I will have. I'm a part of Deliverance Temple where we love by living our vision every day. We connect with our creator continually. We confess our deliverance consistently. We commit to serve creatively. We communicate Christ's love compassionately. Father God, feed me your word. If you believe you're going to be fed, go ahead and make some noise in this place. Hallelujah. There's nothing like raising your expectation level for God to bless you because you didn't have to get up this morning and come to church. And so when you come to church, expect that God is going to meet you there and do something for you because one word from God can change your entire situation. Amen. Let's go ahead and let's bring the title up. Let's roll right in. The title for today is Not Like Us. And somebody say that with me, say not like us. not like us. And so for those of you who are not as saved as everybody else, you understand that this comes from the summer beef between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. And there were a lot of songs that were dropped into beef. And for all you saved folk, don't go try to research the songs. Your spirit may not be ready for it. So anyway, there, there was this one song called They Not Like Us, and it came out, and the beat and the phrase kind of stuck all summer long, They Not Like Us. And I used it in one of my sermons, and it kind of stuck with me, but I had not yet preached on it, and so we even made T-shirts that had it on the back. But then I thought this would be a good time to actually talk about it. So I'm not talking about Drake and Kendrick. I'm always rising above what the world is doing. I may borrow something from them, but the Bible says we are a holy nation. We are a peculiar people. We are a royal priesthood. So in honesty, everybody's not supposed to be like us. The problem in our day and age, we have too many church people who are like everybody else. And we have other people who are looking and wondering if you're just like them, why should I choose what you're doing? So really not like us, it applies to us as believers. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk through three not like us in the scriptures. I'm going to extrapolate and pull some things from the scripture to make that, uh, that phrase or that title jump out to us, not like us. We're going to go to three things in the scripture. And the way we're going to lay it out, we're going to have two negatives and then one positive. We'll close with a positive and then we'll use two negative. Are you guys ready to roll? Ready. All right, let's start off with number one, our first negative. Number one is this, self-inflicted intimidation. Let me pause and say that... Um, it's one thing to be wounded. It's another thing to have a self-inflicted wound. In uh, the researching of history of wars throughout uh, the ages, there was something they termed called friendly fire. And what friendly fire is, you did not get wounded by the enemy, but you got wounded by somebody 
close to you. In other words, it was a self-inflicted wound. And unfortunately, many times in our own life, sometimes our biggest problem is us. And our biggest problem is our own thinking. Many times the devil doesn't have to do a whole lot to get you down. You do all the whooping for him. You pick up the club and you beat yourself up. I, I know that you're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you're in church on Sunday. But let's be honest, sometimes the hardest person on ourselves is ourselves. Yeah. Especially if you're raised in the church because you want to do right, you want to do well, but we all have a dual nature and sometimes the other person gets the best of us and we don't, we don't always do what we want to do, when we want to do, how we want to do. Now just on Friday, I was driving to my preaching engagement, minding my own business. I had the cruise control set. There was a car in front of me, and I wasn't going to go too fast. I was just going to allow the car to do what it does. And so my car has something called Super Cruise where I can actually take my hands off, and it will drive for me as long as I'm not uh, taking an exit. So I set it. I took my hands off, and I allowed it to drive. And I was following the flow of traffic because that's what the Super Cruise will do. And so I got my hands off, and behind me there was this Dodge Ram that got real close on the back of my bumper. And I'm wondering, what is he doing? But I'm like, I'm not going to get irritated, not going to get bothered. I'm going to preach. I'm just going to keep on driving. But then they got on the right side of me, and they gave me a finger that you don't usually get in church. And preaching pastor switched and shifted to something else. Now, I didn't respond with another finger, but I pulled it off a of super cruise and I put my foot on the gas. If you want to act ugly, we can act ugly. And so I chased him down and got in front of him and he got next to me and I sped up so he couldn't get past me. And then I heard the spirit say, that's enough, Andre. That's, I, for a moment, I forgot where I was, who I was. Because we have another nature. And so then I politely just moved back over to the other lane and let him get in front of me. And he flipped me off again. But I was like, God, I'm just going to let it ride. But guess what? We don't always let it ride. Because we are human. But sometimes our wounds are self-inflicted. But this I'm talking about intimidation. Let's move to Numbers 13, looking at verse 27. This was their report to Moses. We entered the land you sent us to explore. Uh -huh. And it is indeed a bountiful country. Bountiful country. A land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produces. So there were 12 spies sent out because the promised land, there was a promise in the promised land. God said, I'm going to give you guys the land after I got you out of Egypt, after I got you over the Red Sea, after I got you out of the wilderness, I'm going to move you into a land that's flowing with milk and honey. In other words, God says, I got a blessing with your name on it. And so the spies went out and they looked at the land and they said, it's just like you said it was, and it is a land flowing with milk and honey, Honey, and here are the fruits and the produce that it produces. Let's go to the next verse. But the people hold living on, there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop at that first word. What's the first word? But. What's that first word? But. Here's the problem. Many times your big butt keeps getting in the way. It was just like God said it was, but uh, I believe God going to bless me, but I believe things going to turn around, but it's always after the button. Here's the problem with the but. The but has a way, because it's a conjunctive word, it has a way of canceling out the previous statement. So if I was to say of Sister Kelly, Sister Kelly, you look so beautiful today, but your breath really stink. Guess what she's going to remember? She's going to remember the last half because the butt has a way of canceling out the first half. And so they said, God is just like you said, but. Now let's go ahead and read the verse in its entirety. I'll let you read the whole thing. 
But the people living there are powerful mm -hmm. and their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there. The descendants of Anak. Basically, they said, God is just what you said, but the people. All right, let's look at the next verse. But Caleb tried to quiet the people. So Caleb is trying to bring another but to, to get them to not self-inflict themselves with a wound. Read. As they stood before Moses, let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. He's like, don't, don't, don't start tripping now. We can do this. We can make it. We can conquer this. And look at what they said next, the next verse. But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. They are stronger than we are. Next verse, and this is where we'll, we'll bring it home. And there we saw the giants the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. We were in our own sight as grasshoppers. In other words, what, what they said is, God, is just like you promised, but the people over there, they're so strong, and in our own minds, in our self-inflicted intimidation, we've already made up in our mind, we cannot win. Yeah. How many times have you talked yourself out of a blessing because you minimized yourself when you looked at what was over there? In other words, what they said, they said, they're not like us. But what they said to themselves is they're better than us. In other words, here's the problem with the life that we live. We live in a life called comparison. And there's a comparison trap because what the comparison does, it makes you belittle what God is doing in your life. Uh, Pastor Andre has a new car, but I can never be blessed like that. Says who? Why are you self-inflicting yourself based on what somebody else is doing? And so here's a takeaway I need to put up for you. Takeaway A, go ahead and put it up. Devaluing you because of them is not of God. Too many of you are looking at them and minimizing you because of what you saw in them. It's okay to compliment them without devaluing you. Oh, man, she looks so good. She's, oh, I can never look like that. Yeah, but baby, she got surgery to do it, so don't be mad at her. She doing what works for her. How about you do what works for you? You ain't got to be mad at her and devalue you because of her. Well, Pastor, I don't have money for surgery. Buy 12 spanks and wear them all at one time. Do whatever you got to do. Don't let yourself be devalued because of somebody else. See, God's blessing for them doesn't have to intimidate me. Just because their marriage is prosperous doesn't have to intimidate what God's working on in my marriage. So many times we inflict ourselves by ourselves because we look at other folk and we automatically devalue ourselves and that's not of God. They not like us. No, they're not like you. But they haven't been through what you've been through. So celebrate you. Because here's the thing. If they went through what you went through or what you're going through, they may act like you. So stop worrying about them and focus on what God is doing in you. So this is what the children of Israel said. They said, we were like grasshoppers in all our own sight. And then they made this next statement. And we were grasshoppers to them. This is what happens when you have a self-inflicted intimidation. You automatically assume what somebody else is thinking about you. You ever had somebody mad at you that you don't know why they're mad at you? And then when they, you find out, they say, he think he all that. I haven't even talked to you. I haven't even said anything to you. But you are so low in you, you assume everybody's talking about you that you can't do anything. You got to let go of that minimal funky thinking because it is robbing and ruining you. 
Now, it happens everywhere, but it happens in church. Let me first talk about how it happens in my job. One of my very good friends, once we got to talking, they said, I thought you were stuck up. Because you wasn't talking to nobody. You wasn't saying anything. I was clocking out. I wasn't trying to talk to nobody. I was trying to hit the gate. But I wasn't mad at anybody, but she misread it and thought I was stuck. And we ended up becoming great friends. But guess what? It happens in church too. Sister Microphone has a toothache. And so Sister Microphone decides I'm going to press my way to church. And hopefully God will help me with my toothache. But they're grimacing because the toothache. And the moment you walk in, they're grimacing. And the devil tells you they frowned up at me when I walked in. See, I ain't going back to the church because they was making faces at me. Yes, she was making faces because she had a toothache. But because you have such a low mind and such a minimal mind, you allow the devil to tell you anything to mess you up. Guess what? You weren't coming to God for them to begin with. So even if they weren't looking at you funny, you're not here for them. I got to move on, but let me say this. If they were handing out a million dollars at the bank, you can look at me funny, you can talk about me, you can yell at me, you can scream at me, and nothing's going to stop me from getting what belongs to me. So stop inflicting yourself by yourself about a bunch of junk that's in your head. Always assuming they're not like me. They're better than me. Stop it. It's a waste of your time, and it's devilish and demonic. All right, let's move on to point number two. We only have three points. We're moving quick. Our, own, our way is the only way syndrome. So the first negative is when you're looking at someone, and you say they're not like us, and you use that to devalue, devalue you. The second one is when you have an our way is the only way syndrome. Let's look at Mark 9, 38 through 40. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Mm. So the disciples, John, said, we see somebody who is driving out demons in your name, but they not like us. And so since they not like us, we told them to stop because they not like us. Now, now, I said the other thing we talked about, it happens in the world and in the church, but this is really bad in the church because if you don't get baptized like me, you ain't, you're not like us. You're not saying, see, because we're wearing T-shirts today, there's somebody say them folk ain't saved because they're up in here with them T-shirts, they not like us, but your way is not the only way. See, God is so big, he can include your way and my way, and they both be right. Yeah. Let me give you an example. I, I was talking to someone, and we were talking about doctrinal differences, but we are yet friends. We have doctrinal differences, and we're yet friends, yet real close. And people will assume that we wouldn't be friends. And he asked me one time, why, why do you think we are still friends above our doctrinal differences? And I told him this. I said, if I was to go to the Grand Canyon... And I was on the west side of the Grand Canyon. You would go to the Grand Canyon and you were on the north side of the Grand Canyon. It's a possibility I might see something on the west side that's different than what you see that's on the north side. But because the Grand Canyon is so big, it's a possibility that both of us are right. I'm right from my perspective, but you're right from your perspective. Here's the thing, God is so big that it's not just one person that's right. Yeah. So it's a possibility the way they're doing it is right and the way you're doing it is right. It's right for you and it's right for them. So stop worrying that everybody's not like you. Well, they speak in tongues and I don't like it. Well, don't go to their church. Go to the church that don't speak in tongues. But you don't got to talk about them because everybody's not supposed to be like you. Here's the thing. Copies are never as valuable as originals. So if everybody's copying each other, there is no originality. So God likes all kinds of things. Guess what? God moves in loud church like us, but he also moves in quiet church. God moves in black church, and he moves in white church. Guess what? God moves in Republican churches, 
and he moves in Democrat churches. Because he's so big, you don't have to worry that everybody's not like you because everybody's not supposed to be like you. Uh, okay, hold on. Y'all clapping, but let, let, let me press the needle a little further. God touches gay folk like he touches straight folk. Because yeah. God is a deliverer. God can do what he want to do, when he want to do it, how he want to do it. Everybody ain't got to be like you. Because he's a big God. He's a great God. He's a mighty God. He's God. He can do what he want, when he want, how he want to do it. So stop thinking your way is the only way. Now some of y'all are clapping and saying, wow, this, I, I'm enjoying this preacher. But when I lift up my shoulder and you see a tattoo on my arm, oh Lord, I can't listen to him no more. God can bless a tatted body and an untatted body because he's God. He can do what he want to do, when he want to do, how he want to do it. So John said, there's somebody over there casting out demons, but I told him to stop because he ain't like us. Let's look at the next verse. Look at what Jesus said. Do not stop him, Jesus said. For no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. Jesus said, leave them alone. Because if they're really of me, their life is going to prove it out. You don't have to be the Holy Ghost police running around and pulling everybody over because they don't do church like you do church. God says, leave some of them folk alone. Now, this is Family and Friends Day, and I'm glad that family and friends came to church, but sometimes church folk, the reason why family and friends won't come to your church is because you always in their business telling them how they going to hell. Don't nobody want to hear that 24-7. Leave folk alone and let God do the work. The Bible says one plants, one waters, but God does the increase. Let me talk to you parents for a second. Sometimes your grown kids, yes, you carry them from nine months, but the reason why they shut you off is because you always got something negative to say. You always talk about how they smell like weed and how you need to take them dreads out of your hair and how you need to stop sleeping with someone, so-and-so and so-and-so. Why don't you just shut up and let God do the work? Because when God does it, he does it well. There's an old saying is you got to catch the fish before you clean them. You got to grab them before you clean them. So Jesus said, leave them alone. But then he makes a statement that's powerful. Let's go ahead and let's put it up. For whoever is not against us is for us. In other words, Jesus is saying, you are making trouble where there is no trouble. He's actually saying, you are causing self-inflicted wounds. We are, are living in a day and age that there's so many devils out there. We don't need to be forcing people to be devils that don't want to be devils. Sometimes the reason why people act up is because you keep speaking stuff over their life. Now, excuse me, I, I know y'all in my church, so sometimes I'm a little real. But if you're always calling your daughter a hoe, maybe that's why she keep acting like one. Maybe you ought to close your mouth for a second. Oh, I don't want to go there. Let me get off of that. Or maybe you forgot who you were when you were her age. Uh-oh, never, never mind. Let me... I don't want to make nobody mad. Let me go on. Let me mind my business. And I, I, I like that God, the Bible says God forgets our sins. But God forgets our sins, but why you forget your sins? Because some of y'all get saved and you forget who you used to be. You stopped smoking two weeks ago and now all of a sudden, ooh, I can't stand smoke. I just can't stand those people. You just stopped two weeks ago. Stop, stop acting so sedity and just come on. Come on, let's be real. All right. Uh, let's, let's, let's read it out of the Message Bible. Let's put this up in Message. Same, same verses, Message Bible. Read it. John spoke up. 
Teacher, we saw a man using your name to expel demons, and we stopped him because he wasn't in our group. Oh, that's the, that's the bottom line. He wasn't in our group. He wasn't in our denomination. He, he wasn't in our church. Do, do you know it just so happens that Terrestrial Temple and uh, Deliverance Temple are both having family and friends day at the same time? And you know what my wife was trying to do? She was trying to find Terrestrial Temple's flyer so she could post it too. Because we're not in competition with each other. We are in one team, one group. Whether you come into my doors or to their doors, I'm so glad you're coming in somebody's doors. All right, let's go to the next verse. Jesus wasn't pleased. Don't stop him. No one can use my name to do something good and powerful and in the next breath, cut me down. All right, put this up. This is, this is really powerful. The next verse. If he's not an enemy, he's an ally. All right, here's takeaway number B or takeaway letter B. Making unnecessary enemies because you're too judgmental is not of God. Sometimes you're making enemies of people that you actually could work with and do life with, but because they didn't do it like you were raised, then you assume that it's wrong. There's an old, old story because some of the things that we do is not necessarily God, it's just our tradition. And the Bible says sometimes we make the, because of our tradition, we make the word of God no effect. So that there's, there's this couple who hadn't been married long, they'd been only married about a year, and so the, uh, the wife bought a ham for Thanksgiving. And she got the ham and she cut both ends of the ham off. And she put it in the oven. And the husband was like, what are you doing? Now, let me just throw this out there for new husbands. When your wife is cooking, you don't need to be saying a whole lot. Sometimes you just need to shut up. But he, he was a new husband. He didn't know any better. And he said, that ain't the way you, you do it. And she said, yes, it is. He said, no, it's not. You're throwing away a good part of the ham. She said, that's the way you're supposed to do it because my mama did it that way. And he said, my mama didn't do it that way. Next thing you know, they fussing and fighting. So later on, the wife went and asked her mama, and she was like, uh, I cut both ends of the ham off, and my husband got upset. And the mama said, that's the way you cook a ham. And she was like, well, why do you cook a ham that way? And she was like, because my mama cook a ham that way. So now wife and mama go to grandma and they ask grandma, uh, why do you cut the ends of a ham off when you cook a ham? And grandma says, because my pan was too small to fit the whole ham. So I cut both ends off just so I could cook the ham. But something was passed down the generations and people assumed because it was done this way, it's right and it's the only way. And let me say it again, stop making enemies of people because you're too judgmental. But look at them folk, they, they worship God on Saturday. But are they worshiping God? Well, that's all I worry about. Some people say you ain't supposed to have music in the church. But are people getting delivered? Here's what Jesus said. As long as my name is going out and being celebrated, that's what's important. So the first issue is they're not like us because they're better than us. The other issue is they're not like us because they're not a part of our group. Those are our two negatives. Let's go to number three. Point number three. This is, we're going to switch to the positive side. Just say this with me. Say we locked in. We're in a day and age where we cannot afford to have self-inflicted wounds. We can't afford to have unnecessary enemies because there's so much hell in the land. The only thing we need to do is get locked in. And here's the thing. When we get locked in, it's not just for Sunday morning. We get locked in in our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I, I'm a pastor, but I need Jesus for myself. You're in the pews and you're in the seats, but you need Jesus for yourself. And it's time to get locked in. Somebody say, get locked in. Get locked in. 
if you're a sports person, if you ever play sports, when it comes to the fourth quarter, if the game has been teetering back and forth, and maybe you're in the last minutes of the fourth quarter, the coach will say, lock in. In other words, get focused. And here's the problem is a lot of us have not been focused, but the devil is not playing games with us. So it's time for us to get locked in. It's time for us to get focused. So let's move to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 6. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. Let us not be like everybody else. Let us not be lulled to sleep. Let us wake up and be sober. When I talk about sobriety, I'm not just talking about drugs and alcohol, which it could mean that, but we have to wake up and be sober because the Bible says we have an adversary and it says he walks around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may divide. So that means, number one, he's not a lion, but he acts like one. And number two, he seeks only whom he can devour, which means he can't devour everybody. So only those who are asleep and those who are not awake and those who are not sober and those who are not focused and those who are not locked in, that's the ones that he can get. So you got to make up in your mind, I'm not going to be like everybody else. I don't have time to go to the club tonight, not because I'm so saved, but because I'm locked in. I can't scroll Facebook all day and worry about what everybody else is doing because I'm trying to get locked in. I'm trying to sober myself because I'm working on something. Now let me slow down and say something and I said it before to our church but I'll say it to everyone who's here there are many of you who have destinies prophetic destinies over your life and up until this point you haven't seen all that God is going to do in your life but you're not waiting on God God is waiting on you he's waiting on you to get locked in so he can do what he needs to do and so it's high time to stop worrying about what everyone else is doing and make up in your mind, I'm not going to be like everyone else. I'm not going to do what everyone else is doing. I'm locked in because my family needs me. I'm locked in because my city needs me. I'm locked in because my nation needs me. I'm locked in because my mind needs to be regulated. I'm locked in because I need my joy back. I'm locked in because I need addiction to break off of my life. I'm locked in because I need my peace back. I'm locked in because I'm working on something. So it's time to wake up church. Stop sleeping. Stop playing church. Stop worrying about the church over there and the Christian over there. Be like Michael Jackson and look at the man in the mirror and start working on yourself. It's time to lock in to God. Reason why I can't worry about Sister K, because what God has for me is for me. I can't worry about what she's doing. Now here, let me pause and say this. A lot of y'all, unfortunately, you're locked only to your pastor. I'm grateful for the people who trust me. I'm grateful for the people who listen to me. But if I fail, that's no excuse for you to fall. Because your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. You're not looking to me. There's, another, there's a, a whole other group of people. Y'all looking to Kamala and y'all looking to Donald. Guess what? Donald can mess up. Kamala can mess up. Stop looking at everybody else and look to God. I'm locked into God. November 5th, whatever happens in November 5th is not going to shake my foundation because I wasn't building my hope on the Republicans. I wasn't building my hope on the Democrats. I was building my hope on the blood of Jesus because when I was in a dorm room losing my mind, it was God that stepped in a dorm room and rescued me and pulled me out of my sin. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I don't have time to trust in anybody else but the sweet name of Jesus Christ. And that's another thing. Can't wait till you get to church to call on his name. 
because there's times where my car been going off the road. I didn't have time to call a pastor, a bishop, a pope, and a cardinal. I didn't have time to come to a Sunday morning or a Wednesday Bible study, but I said Jesus, and somehow the car that was going off the road came back on the road because I know in the time that I need, I can call on the name of the Lord. Saints, it's time to lock in and call on the name of the Lord because whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved let's go to Hebrews 10 37 to 38 it says this for yet in a very little while the one who is coming will come and will not delay I know y'all get tired of that because all your life they've been telling you the end times is coming Jesus coming back but listen that's what the scripture says and let me let you know something it's not getting better it's only getting darker. If you you can you can actually if you are spiritual, you can look at people and see the lostness on their face, the lostness on their mind, the confusion of their mind. Things are not necessarily getting better. So the scripture says it's it's only a little while for Jesus is going to do what he's going to do, and he's not going to delay. Let's look at verse thirty-eight. But my righteous one will live by faith. My soul. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Say, say it again. My righteous one will live by what? Faith. No, they're going to live by who they vote for. Faith. No, they're going to live by who they pastor is. Faith. No, they're going to live by a long dress all the way down to the ground. Faith. No, they got to live by faith. All right. My soul takes no pleasure in anyone who shrinks back. Uh oh. Jesus said through the scripture, my soul takes no pleasure in anybody who gets to this place in their life and starts shrieking back, starts running back. The scripture says anyone who puts their hand to the plow and moving forward and then turns away is not worth the kingdom of God. And we're living in a day and age, there's a whole lot of Christians who are checking out and stepping off and believing everything. Oh, I, 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 can't, I, I, can't, I can't trust God no more, so I'm about to go and get my palms read. I'm going to go to my crystal ball. Baby, this ain't the time to go to the crystal ball. Amen. Well, Pastor, I, 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 I don't know any scriptures, so I've been burning sage in my house. You need more than sage, sweetheart, for the demons that's coming on this land. You need to be locked into God. And anybody who's locked in, it's not time to shrink back. It's not time to fall away. It's not time to turn around. It's not time to dabble in new stuff. Oh. I'm almost done, but let me add this. I don't know who I'm talking to, but he was no good when you had him. She was no good when you had her. That's why they are EX, they're ex. So when two years later, they ring your phone, tell her, how you doing? Don't answer. Delete, block. All it is is the devil trying to get you to shrink back. And go back. I done come too far to have some knucklehead pull me down now. Not only relationships like that, sometimes it's family members that you love, you appreciate, but whenever they come, they bring drama with them, they bring toxicity with them. I love you, but I'm not allowing you to mess up what I got going on, me and God. I'm locked in and I'm not shrinking back. So what I'm not going to do, what we not going to do is go back. Amen. What we not going to do is walk away. What we not going to do is turn around. I done prayed too hard. I done cried too much. I done fasted too long to get this far and turn around and to back up and start acting a fool. No, 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 no. I'm going all the way with the Lord. Now, to, to some of you, I'll tell you what I tell my church all the time. If I'm going to act up, I'm not going to do it from the pulpit. If I'm going to cut up, I'm going to quit this and I'm going to go all the way cutting up. So if you hear a bunch of rumors about me, all you got to ask is he's still pastoring. Because if I'm still pastoring, I'm locked in. Yes. I'm locked in. Yes. Now, if I want to act a fool, I'm just going to quit. Because it don't make sense for me to go to hell from the church. Amen. If I'm going to go to hell, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going first class ticket. <laughs> but if I'm going to be in the church, I'm going to be in the church. Yes. If I'm going to live for God, I'm going to live for God. If I'm going to go out, I'm going all out for the Lord. 
Because I'm locked in. So what does it have to do with not like us, pastor? Let's go to this next verse. Verse 39. But we are not among those. Let, yeah, read 39 again. Go back to 39. But we are not among those who shrink back. All right. And so are lost. But among those who have faith and so are saved. We so are saved. So what the, uh, I believe it's the King James says, we are not like those who back up. So anybody who's backing up, they're not like us. Anybody who done come this far and they turning around now, they're not like us. Because I got a made of mind. Yes. The old saint says you got to have a made of mind. There's a song we should sing that said, I have decided to follow Jesus. I got a made of mind. No turning back. No turning back. Now, have I wanted to turn back? Yes, I have. Have I had the towel in my hand ready to throw it in? But somehow I realized that God didn't bring me this far to leave me. I don't feel no way tired. I've come too far to give up now. I've come too far to roll over now. I've come too far to quit now. I've come too far to let the devil make a fool out of me now. No, I'm not like that and they not like me. I'm going with the Lord. Some of y'all, you just need a made up mind. You're going to come too far. You just need to make up in your mind. This time, I'm going all the way with the Lord. Now, when I was growing up, when I was young, we got saved every summer. Every time there was a preacher in the roof of Bible, we got scared about hell. We got saved every summer. But I when I really got saved, I was in a dorm room away from my parents, away from the church. There was no organ, was no drum, was no tambourine. And I asked God, if you're so real, you got to show me something. And God stepped out of his heavenly realm and stepped right into my dorm room and showed me something. And when I got done, I stood up and said, God, I'll serve you to the day I die. And that's been almost 30 years ago. And here I am, I'm still serving God. But I didn't serve God because of my daddy. I'm not serving God because of my mama. I'm not serving God because of the church. I'm serving God because he rescued me when I called on him. He loved me when I was unlovable. He washed my sins. He made me white as snow. And all you got to do is make up in your mind that one day for real, you're going to call on the name of the Lord. And guess what? When you do that, everybody ain't going to be like you. So let's close, and they, they brought it up. Let's close with this. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Ooh, Lord. I like what Joshua said. I make up in my mind, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't care what they're doing over there. I don't care what they're doing back there. But as for me and my house, we're going to get this thing together. As for me and my house, we're going to love each other. As for me and my house, we're going to stick together. Guess what? If you see me with a woman that ain't my wife, you need to tell my wife on me because as for me and my house, we're going to live this thing the right way. We're going to do it right. And here's, here's the problem with some of us. We are so eager to let somebody fall. You'll see somebody falling. You won't say nothing, but you turn around. <laughs> No, if you see me fall and catch me, don't let me fall and mess up. As for me and my house, we gonna serve the Lord. No, no, they, they not like us because us, we band together. They not like us because us, we don't let each other fall. We don't, we don't let each other backslide. How you gonna backslide on my watch and you connected to me? If you connected to me and you backslide, I got the backslide. No, we going together, we going forward together because we're in this together. All right, so as me, me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Let's put up takeaway C as we come to a close. Coming this far only to quit now is not a God. There's a lot of y'all here, and you done thought about quitting. You done contemplated quitting. You've had a reason to quit, but sudden wouldn't let you quit. And I'm here to let you know it's because you ain't like everybody else. My father, my late father, he, he, he convinced me. That when I got older, I realized he was just gassing me up. But he's told all of us, he said, one thing Mitchells don't do, Mitchells don't quit. 
he drilled it in my head. I thought I couldn't quit because I was a Mitchell. But what he was doing, he was building into my subconscious that there's no reason to quit. If I'm still breathing, I can get up and I can face whatever I'm going through. I'm like a palm tree. I bend, but I don't have to break. I got bounced back in my spirit. And I'm looking at some folk. You should have went out. You've got loved ones that died on your watch. And you should have been depressed. But somehow, you got a smile on your face. Because you've come too far. Don't let the devil make you quit now. So, let's go on to this confessions. This is how we're going to close. We, we like to close with confessions. So this is where we're going to put this up. We're going to practice this as we close the sermon. When I point to you, I just want you to say this. Say, they not like us. So let's practice it. Oh, y'all sound good. Let's do it again with a little more fervor. I'm going to point to you again. They not like us. So now I'm going to give us some confessions. And when I say them and then I point to you, you are going to respond with. They not like us. All right. Come on. Let's go to the first one. If they stay intimidated. They not like us. Oh, yeah. Let's do it again. If they stay intimidated. They not like us. All right. They're going to the next one. If they stay judgmental. They not like us. If they stay judgmental. They not like us. Let's go to this next one. If they stay ready to quit. They not like us. If they stay ready to quit. They not like us. If they stay ready to quit. They not like us. If they stay ready to quit. They not like us. I'm tired of quitters on my team. I'm tired of quitters in my ear. I don't want no quitters around me because I can't quit. If you ready to quit, you not like us. Amen. Now stand to your feet for our very last one. And it's written all over our shirts. Put it up there. If they don't love. They don't love. If they don't love. They don't love. If they don't love. They, don't love. they not like us. Come on, put your hands together. <laughs> While you're standing before I pray, can I get a, just a good old picture with y'all? I'm going to take a picture because y'all just look good. Y'all look good. And folk that don't believe in God, they not like us. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, everybody's not like us, but they're not supposed to be. And you've brought us through hell and high water. And you're taking us to a level of blessing that everybody can't stand in. And we're not going to worry. We're not going to back up. We're not going to apologize for what you do in our life. Because we understand everybody's not like us. Everybody's not supposed to be like us. But we're supposed to be like Christ. Because you died for us. You hung, bled, died for us. And you rose again. And because we've accepted you in our life, the Bible says that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, it dwells in in us and so we bounce back up toward every occasion we meet every challenge we are more than conquerors greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world with the head and not the tail we're above only and not beneath and we are delivered because we're deliverance temple in Jesus name and let everybody say amen before we're dismissed let me just add one prayer. If you're here and you don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sins, you've never called on him to be your savior. If you're here and you're in a backslidden state, the Bible says God is married to the backslider. Don't leave these doors without making your calling and election sure. So if you would like to do that, please just repeat, on me, repeat after me. Father God, Father God you, sent son you sent your son to die for me. To save me of my sins. I opened up my heart to the risen Savior to dwell in me. And from this day forward, I am saved. I am saved. Hallelujah. I am saved. Let's come on. Let's clap for those who join the family of the Lord. God bless you all. You are dismissed. Have a great week.